What's going on, y'all? Before I get started on this review, okay, first of all, this I'm watching the rerun. Um, hit the floor. It's going to be probably early, 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 like around after one something in the morning. Because I forget. I thought I put the stuff on record, but apparently I ain't put shit on record for today. And y'all know I'm getting into it after 8 o'clock. But anyway, y'all still going to get it. So that's why it's going to be late. I'm just letting y'all know. Get started on Love & Hip Hop. ATL season three episode fourteen lost for words I think it's fourteen okay let me get the giggles out and say Mimi <clears throat> I had to say that because you know this is not a laughing matter you know as somebody who went through three deaths you know back to back back to back I understand the pain and all that stuff now. How that feels to lose someone that you care about, someone that you love a whole lot. Her father passed away. And this is when I heard this stuff about it. I remember hearing about her father passing away. And she was at a radio station. And then she put out those texts that Stevie J had sent her. Talking about, so this is karma. This is what you get. I don't give a fuck or some shit like that. I was like, wait a minute. I said, that was some bogus ass shit. I don't give a fuck what you're going through. But... What y'all situation is, but if you ain't had nothing nice to say, if you ain't had no consoling words to say, you ain't had to say shit at all. That was not caused for. You do not kick a person when they're down, especially about a death in their family. When that's her last living, you know, parent, like she said, my last living parent. Look, Eva was on there. Child, stop putting that girl on here. It's just, I just feel so, my soul feel bad for these kids that's on this show. You know, especially hers because she got... Fucked up people around her. No way you slice it. No matter how you slice it. You got Mimi who put the tape out. You got Stevie J who want to blame Mimi for a lot of stuff and act as if, you know, his shit don't stink either. And he just as big of a hoe, you know, as his the bitch that he with, Jocelyn. You know, she's an ex-hoe. Well, she's a hoe. An ex Well, she's a prostitute. Uh, extra well, she's a stripper. A so-called? No. That's all she is. Okay. You know, I was trying to be nice, but I just couldn't do it. But, um, it's just messed up all the way around. And she has the nerve. You know, all these people, they're just coming at me. I have to defend myself in this time when I should be grieving the loss of my father. I have to defend myself to my friends. I have to defend myself to Stevie. I just... I just don't know what to do. And it's like Nico and Eva are the only ones who have been in my corner and the only ones I can depend on while I'm going through this. Let me tell you something, Mimi. Because I meant to say this shit yeah, last week. Because you talked about some Nico, you know, she the one that was there for you. Bitch, you wouldn't be going through none of this shit if it wasn't for Nico. Okay? So let's cut that bullshit. We're going to move on. Um, Carly Red and Young Jock up in the uh, studio. Young Jack back, okay, he in the studio doing some song with her. And I was like, mm, it sounds like the regular ass trap music ass, ranchet ass shit they be playing now. You know, where everything sound the fucking same. I don't see nothing different. And, um, you know, everybody want to follow the same formula to get a goddamn hit. She gonna say, Jack talk about something, okay, everything sounded right. And I'm going to go to New York and try to sell this stuff. I'm a businessman. I'm a salesman and all this stuff. It's just, you got to act right. And she was like, yeah, baby, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. <laughs> and I was like, hold up. You putting all your hopes and dreams on this dude and he can't even get a fucking hit for himself. Okay? He hasn't had a hit since any, many, mighty mo. How many hoes want to go? Whatever, you know, whatever song that fucking was. Okay? How are you putting, look, I'm not going to. Let me stop. Let me fucking stop because it's love and hip-hop. It don't make sense. It's not supposed to make sense. If it don't make sense, it's not supposed to. I can't sit here with my IQ just dropping trying to figure out what this shit... You know, it just... It, it, it literally baffles me. You know, she acting as if... Bitch, you, you couldn't even make it work with L.A. Reed's son. Y'all remember in the first season when she came on here and she was dating L.A. Reed's son? Big boy. You know, and I was like... Ugh. If you couldn't make it work with him... How the fuck you think you're going to make it work with Young Job? Bitch, and let me just tell you this. Carly, you can quit calling that girl that um Young Jock supposedly cheated on you with because technically he ain't cheat on you. Um, he made, you, you probably thought that y'all was in a faithful relationship, but bitch, you want to call her sad piece. You want to call her Miss Piggy. You want to call her 
fat and all that stuff and chunky and shit. Obviously, you can call her all those names in the book, but there was obviously something in that in that girl that Young Jock saw besides her puss that kept him coming back. Okay, so you can stop with all the fucking name calling. Okay, cause bitch, you ain't no fucking prize either. And let me tell you this: you're also a fucking sad bitch. He cheating on his wife with your ass. All right, I don't give a fuck if they separated or not. The ink on the motherfucking divorce paper ain't dry. It ain't even written yet. Okay, so you can stop that bullshit, you know. Uh, uh, which I'm pretty sure he probably still fucking the wife, even though they supposed to be getting divorced. As of yet, they ain't divorced yet. So you want to talk about him cheating? Girl, shut the fuck up. Then we get Benzino. He cleaning off his motorcycle. Stevie J come up there basically like... You know, why would you put Mimi on this cover and then got Jocelyn, my wife, as a cinephile? You know, now you got the Puerto Rican princess pissed off at me. Benzino, like, you need to be the man of your own motherfucking house, okay? You know, you know how much revenue this gonna bring us and all this shit? And I was like, y'all both acting as if, y'all, Benzino got that mentality like he's still working at the source. And Hip Hop Weekly is on that level, and it really isn't, or Double XL, or Vibe Magazine, well, Vibe Magazine ain't even that Vibe Magazine level no more. But, um, you know, this ain't Vogue, this ain't Vanity Fair, this ain't even People or Star, okay? You know, y'all ain't never on that level. Calm the fuck down, you know, get your coins and move the fuck on. Jocelyn, she's just gonna have to fucking get over it, alright? And... Stevie talked about something I didn't know. And I was like, on the last episode, he said you got 24 hours to say what you're going to say. I'm going to still put it on there. What you mean you didn't know? Bitch, I don't care. Erica and Carly Red, they out at the fabric store. First, Tammy wants to put out a damn clothing line. Now, Erica Dixon, who ain't got shit else to do, I guess. So, she was like... I'm finna put out this clothesline uh, class 6, section 8, I mean class 6, for, you know, everybody of all curves and everything, you know, bitches with the big asses, bitches that need some lo let, let loose and all that shit. I'm like, God damn, how many more fucking clothesline can we fucking get? Can somebody put out something else original? Like, let's put out an actual product. Y'all bitches don't know how to, you know, extend your thought process and, and, and all that shit. Y'all just want to go to that simple shit, a fucking clothing line. Something that you ain't going to be designed. Girl, get the fuck out of here. Then Carly telling her to talk about, oh, Jock took the song to somebody up to his label up in New York. And guess what? They really like it. And I want to be able to say that, you know, this my man and we a business partner. Like, I just want to be like this power couple shit. I said no. Hell no. No. Okay? Stop that shit. Stop your delusion, all right? It's just it's just pathetic. It makes you look all the more pathetic. Talking about some, you know, and he's supposed to be gone for a couple of days, but I'm like, he better not be up there with no other bitches. He's supposed to be out of town and all that. I said, Carly, mm, Carly looked like she grayed her teeth on bricks. I'm just saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why that made me laugh myself? And I wasn't even trying to. But uh, anyway... Moving on, uh, uh, Waka Flocka and Deb. We finally see Waka. Like, all the people that's been gone for, like, 15 episodes coming the fuck back on this episode. We see Waka and Deb. Deb, they having a little de uh, get-together, lunch or whatever. So, that Deb can explain the reason why she reacted the way that she reacted when, you know, Waka told them, the parents, that they were married. Him and Tammy was married. And she was basically like, she felt robbed. She felt like she lost another song, son because she wanted to feel that joyous occasion. You know, she wanted to be there. And I understand where she's coming from because <clears throat> of the timing. And like Waka said, you know, it's not about a show. It's, they don't even have engagement, uh, you know, wedding rings or whatever. Now, the way Waka explained it, I get it. But, bitch, I still want a ring or something. I mean, that's just how, you know, you just look at it like that. But... He was like, I don't want no ring because that's material. I just want a fucking foundation. I was like, okay, you know, Waka, you do make a little bit of sense. But eventually, she going to want her goddamn ring, okay? And, um, you know, he was like, we didn't do this for nobody else. We did this for us. And that's what it is. And, you know, I know because she brought up the son's death. And he was like, yeah, it's not like I'm not grieving. And like, what can you do? I still think about it and it hurts. But, you know, you do got to move on. And he was always a fan of Tammy's. And he told me, you need to go ahead and wife her up. And I was like, okay. You know, 
walk of life. Mama, you know, she feel like she lost another son and all that shit. And I'm like, I'm a mama's boy. I ain't going nowhere. I said, at least you can admit that shit. Waka, you know, you all right. Okay, you are all right. You the only nigga on here that ain't on bullshit. Okay, moving the fuck on. Um, um, what the fuck else happened? Bitch, I just fucking forget. I'm sorry, all this language. Y'all like, girl, stop cussing. Kalina, Kalina going to get the pregnancy test at the doctor. And she with me, uh, not me, me. She with Rashida because she's a little scared. And they go get the pregnancy test. And, you know, the doctor come out and say, yes, you really are pregnant. You have a Christmas baby. You're nine weeks. And the only concern is that the line is very, very faint, which means that something could be wrong with the pregnancy. You know, have you... <clears throat> been going through some stuff is you, she was like I just had a little spotting you know been stressed out it's been mold in the house and all this shit girl he was like let's do an ultrasound pause when Rashida asked her how many kids does Tony have that bitch said this will make nine I said nine you got a basketball team plus replacements going on right there like what the fucks and then Rashida gonna say something. I said, damn. And I was like, wait a minute, Rashida. Don't Kurt got like 15,000 kids? And then she interjected and she was like, I mean, I know Kurt got a whole bunch of kids. I was like, okay, you cleared that shit up because I was about to come for that. And it was like, but you know, having all those kids put stress on you. And I was like, that is true. Maybe that's why his finger so fucked up. Like, I just don't understand. Did his finger look like, Tony's finger looked like he smashed it in a door or something. No lie. And, it, and the nail just grew back funny or the nail dead or something. Because, look, I did that once before. I slammed the same finger in a door. I slammed it in the windowsill. And then I re-slammed it in the car door. Right before it healed. And that bitch fell off. It got black as fuck and it just fell off. I mean, all of this right here, just all of this, it just fell the fuck off. Nail and everything. I was just like, God damn, you know. So maybe that's what happened. And it just grew back funny. You know, fortunately for mine, it grew back correctly. But his just looked like he scratched his booty with it. I don't know. Y'all tell y'all. Mm. So, you know, Kalina, they do the ultrasound and kind of find out the baby is healthy. She asked him, you know, can I have sex? And he was like, at this point, no. She was like, sex to us. I was like, bitch, that's sex. Unless you're talking about playing with your kid. I mean, you, you know, not... Okay, we're not going to go there. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. No penetration. That's basically what the doctor was trying to say. No penetration. I mean, if you want to finger your ass, play... Look... Like I said, we're not going to go there. So, moving on from that. Mimi and Arian meets up. She just needs somebody that's, you know, going to talk to her and and give her something or, uh, you know, some comfort that she's not getting. And, you know, she's in an emotional state. They hug for a long time. And she was like, oh, my God, you get the best hugs. I was like, okay. So... You know, she was basically, Arian was trying to comfort her. I'm like, you know, I know that feeling and the hurt don't go away, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, I'm here for you. Anything that you need, I'm here for you. And then she was like, you know, I just don't understand why did Stevie pick this day, the day that my father died, to come for me. Because she said at first, he called her on the phone and said, don't you ever get on a radio station talking about I'm not a good dad. And I'm like, well, bitch, you owe all that child support. I mean, and it's not like you couldn't pay it. Let's get that straight. Okay. And then called her a hoe. And then, you know, sent that text message, you know, about the karma is a bitch and all that shit. Mind you, Stevie J acts as if he didn't have a sex tape out with E. Okay. And maybe he thinks he a little bit better because, you know... It's not going to affect the kids now because they're older. But, I mean, you probably had kids back then with Eve, and they probably knew about it, too, you know. So, you can't come for her and call her a hoe, but, bitch, you do a whole bunch of hoe things, okay? You know, and I'm not going to sit here and say that 
Mimi is a hoe because she said she fucked on camera with somebody that technically was her boyfriend or is her boyfriend at the time. You know, I don't see nothing wrong with that. But, you know, it's just that the reason why people get so fucking upset and not here for Mimi, and I have to say this in the comments, um, you know, she dumb as fuck. She dumb as fuck and she's easily mani being uh, manipulated and allowing herself to do that with this dude. Like, we all can see this motherfucker is a fucking opportunist. And I guarantee you she probably still gonna be with dude after she's sitting back looking at the way that he's reacting to all of this shit. While you looking at this season and you seeing how he is and you still probably gonna be with that. You're dumb as fuck. That's why. That's why we can't, you know, I'm just not here for you. Like, girl, we're not stupid. But yet you think we are. Okay? We're not as stupid as you look in this situation. And, like I said, I don't think she's a hoe. No. I, I mean, well, I've heard, you know, she industry pussy just like um, Jocelyn was. She got a track record, too, so she can't really come for Jocelyn. But it may not be as extensive as Jocelyn, but, you know, she dated in the industry and she fucked in the industry, too. I know that shit for fact, too. Um, go look that shit up. But, um, yeah. So, you can't come for her, Stevie, really, and not come for your motherfucking self because you's a hoe and you married a fucking hoe, quote, unquote. You know, so you say y'all married. But, um... Yeah, that was fucked up. And then Arian talked about something, you know, I'm going to give my support to you. If that's who you want to be with, you got my support. Regardless of how I feel, you know, this ain't the time or place. I'm going to be there for you. I was like, you swallowed that because Ashley wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't even mention it. <laughs> Deb is in this meeting going over the no RIP, uh, no reckless internet posting campaign that she has going on. And, you know, Tammy and comes in and it just so happened that the girl who she was working on the thing with all of a sudden gets a phone call. You know, Tammy wants to go to a fertility clinic, you know, to making sure everything is good with her, good with Waka. Because she was like, you know, Waka was a wild boy. He smokes too much. And I'm just trying to make sure. I didn't know Tammy already had a kid. Deb is like, just give me some goddamn grandkids and I don't give a fuck. Stevie. Oh, so he like, so the Puerto Rican prince has been pissed off at me for a while. And I'm trying to get back on the good side. So let me get the lights, the camera, and some action, you know. I got, you know, setting up this little video uh, scene and, and got her fans. And, you know, I'm trying to get her back. Hey, right, baby, you happy? You know I'm happy, Stevie. And you know just the way to uh, talk to me and get me back. But um, you doing your good job good as a manager. Because, you know, you've been fucking up a lot, okay? You've been fucking up a lot. You know, cheating on me with them little hoes and all this shit. And, you know, I, I, I need a headline spot as Stevie and Zeno. And, you know, well, Stevie and Zeno, we run into some permit problem. Because I did hurt that shit ain't even open no more. And, you know, I'm just like, girl, shut the fuck up. Up. Ain't nobody really here for you outside of Love and Hip Hop, Jocelyn. I'm just saying that. I'm just going to put it out there and I'm just going to say that. Outside of Love and Hip Hop, you're a joke. On Love and Hip Hop, you're a fucking joke too, okay? You are a nice look at. Your antics are hilarious at times, but you know, it's tiring and no one will take you seriously ever, all right? You get up there and you do your little song, maybe because I'm into reggaeton and all that stuff and you know... The Puerto Rican thing is just like, okay, I can get with the little Spanish stuff a little bit sometimes, sometimes. But, you know, when she switch over into English, it just don't do it for me at all. And ain't everybody on this bitch been talking about music, music, music. Arlie Red, you got a single, you know, the, the label like it that Jock sent, you know. Uh, what's this girl name? Jocelyn, you doing this music video? Bitch, I ain't never heard the song. And if it is a music video out, it's going straight to fucking world star hip hop. Okay? If that. And then Carly Rae, um, it's July and I have yet to hear the song. What are you talking about? Bitch, y'all just stop it. Stop fucking wasting our time. So Kalina and Tony, they've been staying up in the hotel. They got at least two and a half more weeks to stay up in there. And, you know, she basically, like, she stressed out. She told him they couldn't have sex. And he gonna say something, you will. I can't get up in it. Mm, it's some other shit that you can do. I was like, nigga, you, they always say some shit like that. But anyway, she like, you know, this staying up in this hotel all this time got me thinking more so about the pregnancy. And, you know, Meshack, it's the baby name Meshack. God damn, Meshack and the Betty Go. Girl, 
Anyway, staying at the mama house and all that. And I'm sitting here the whole time. Like, y'all, you stressing over trying to bring another child up in this world. And you can't even take care of the one that you have. The one that you have. Like, if you y'all two can't take care of the one that y'all have together, how is he with the seven other kids that he got? I just want to know because it just don't make no sense. And y'all can justify, oh, she's been working. She's been this. It's been plenty of single mothers out here, single motherfucking mothers who been working, who have multiple kids and they did it all by themselves. Not giving it to the grandma, not giving it to auntie and friends and cousin and all that to race, but did it by themselves. It's all type of artists out here. Granted, they may have nannies and stuff, but still, they go ahead and bring their kids with them. And some of them don't have nannies. And you only got one child between y'all two. Come on now, you can't. You 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 really, really stop it. Ain't no fucking excuse. And I'm not bad. And whatever they trying to sell, who gives a fuck? Then Aria messy ass. She goes talking to Stevie J about Mimi. <sighs> I thought she was going to be talking about the fact that he sent her that text message and said that shit about, you know, her father, you know, Carmen's a bitch or whatever because the daddy just died. But no, she started it all talking about the sex tape. And I was like, here we go, girl. That's what I mean about being messy. Talking about something. Did you see it? He was like, bitch, I talked the whole, I lived it. I talked the bitch with everything that she knew or whatever. I was like, really? She must, mm, didn't learn a lot because, mm, okay. And... You know, I get where Arian is coming from, but I wish Arian probably would have just left it alone a little bit, you know. But, you know, I don't know. How y'all feel about that? Do y'all think she a little bit messy? I, I understand her trying to uh, get to the source of the issue and, and, and coming at him because of the shit that he said in that text message. But I wouldn't have brought up the sex tape. Fuck all that. But then again, yeah, because technically that's not his business. But then again, it is because they got a child. But then again, it's not because, look, come on. He up there talking about some, I get where he coming from, saying she shouldn't have did that. She put that shit out there on purpose. The Basically what he was saying, he, he she did that shit on purpose. And he was like, ain't that amount of money, money. Ain't no amount of money. <laughs> ain't no amount of money gonna let me do that. I mean, at least it's $10 million. I put the shit out there. I put my thing on the table right now. And I'm like, pause. Stevie, you got dick pics out there for free. Okay, come on. You got a sex tape yourself for free. Now, let's stop playing. Let's stop fucking bullshitting. You know, the only thing that she did different was got money for it. You know, different from your situation. She got money for it. And, you know, it's just it's just real frustrating because he tried to make himself seem like he's the fucking good guy. And I know he concerned because, like I said in the beginning when this shit first came out, that, you know, the only difference between... Nico and Stevie J, like, you leave Stevie J. The only thing is that I could say about Stevie was he would have never did no shit like that to Mimi. He would have never convinced her to put no sex tape out. And Arian said, you know, I think she put that shit out trying to um spite you and get back at you. So, do I agree with it? Hell no. But I think that's what she did. I said, that's a good fucking point right there. Could be. And he was like, yeah, but it was the wrong motherfucking move. And the only thing that they agreed on was the fact that they both can't stand Nico. And that he's an ass. He's a scumbag. And he's a knockoff Stevie J. And I was like, oh, okay. And he's going to say something. Don't you know that her daddy just died? What? He saw the tape and had a heart attack? I was like, come on, Stevie. Aaron was like, this is, why do you have to be so insensitive? It's like, he was a good dude, but you know, I mean, you know, when you try to come from the good guy, you know, I'm going to come back at you. Like, nigga, shut the fuck up, because you're not the good guy. As much as you want to think, you're not. Okay? Stop it. So, um, Carly and, uh, uh, what they're going to name, Erica, they go to this fashion event trying to check out some of the local fashion, um, designers, I guess. And, you know, I wasn't too impressed by any of them. Actually, I wasn't impressed at all. And, you know, Erica's like, bitch, is that my baby daddy over there? So, Scrappy was there, and Scrappy basically said, Freddie O, you know, he got a, a FreddieO.com, I think that's what it is, invited him to the fashion show, and he was like, you know, fucking free drinks and shit, models, of course, I'm gonna be there. I would have probably said the same damn thing, too. You know, never turn down nothing that's free, and you got plenty of opportunity to see some ass. Go ahead, you know, you ain't touching shit, but you know, just, I'm just looking. 
And, you know, they chatting up and everything. And their little interaction, they was flirting a little bit with each other. But it's nice to see them not arguing with one another, okay? I said, all right, y'all kind of matured just for a minute. You know, just for a little bit. Then, all of a sudden, Scrappy was like, let me leave this shit. He go over. Mind you, Young Jack was supposed to be out of town. Scrappy goes over to Young Jack like, love, my baby. I'll come over here. My baby mama's here. Oh, she here? She by herself? No, she with Carly. You feel nice? And I got to do this. And this shit's nice. I'm like, stop talking stupid like that, nigga. Stop it. You know? And he's like, oh, yeah, Carly here? And I was like, yeah. So Carly and Erica. Is that your name? Just Jock over there. Mind you, Jock, this shit must have been planned. We don't know how I know. Because everybody else got on either dark or muted colors. This motherfucker in all white. In all white. And you can't help but see a nigga in all white when everybody else is wearing dark blue, black, and, and gray and shit like that. Bitch, you're in all fucking white. You want it to be seen. You want it to be caught. Here go Carly. This bitch told me he was out that, uh, out, out of town. And then he went the same bitch that I told y'all about. Miss Piggy. Obviously, now see, Carly, didn't I say this at the beginning? Stop calling that girl out her motherfucking name because both of y'all thoughts, all right? And obviously, she got something that he wants that keeps him coming back. So, it says ain't don't matter, all right? It is what the fucking is, okay? Look at you. Yeah, she may be a little thicker than you, but bitch, you ain't perfect. Come on now. Stop fucking playing. And then she go walk up to them and then the thing go off. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about this. I gotta wait till, um fucking 11 o'clock for um what the show is is it 11 o'clock did that shit come on actually 12 fucking o'clock man i'm mad hit the flow i see y'all lady y'all tell me how y'all feel about this peace